Good morning. How's it going, everyone? Happy National Farmers Day. Welcome, welcome to Organic Valley in Cashin, Wisconsin. Hope everyone's doing well today. I'm Chelsea, and this is my co-host, Mindy. We'll be walking you through the next hour, and we are going to be joining Sabrina. Hello, Sabrina. How's it going this morning? Oh, it's going good. I had a little extra help from some of the OV employees doing chores this morning, so that was really fun. Uh, he's going to be off camera today, but uh, my old boss from when I entered with Organic Valley is actually with me today. Very cool. That's exciting. And uh, Sabrina, where is your farm located? Are you in Wisconsin, correct? Yeah, so we're just south of La Crosse, Wisconsin. We're about 20 minutes away from Organic Valley's cashed in office and maybe like 30 minutes to 40 minutes away from their headquarters in Lafarge. So we're really close. We're one of their Cooley region farms. Um, and it's really cool being a part of the Organic Valley community here in Wisconsin. Uh, you know, this is the place where it all started, right? We have some of the uh, original farms are just down the road from us. So it's a really cool history for this area. It's great to be a part of it. Yeah. Happy National Farmers Day, Sabrina. Thank We're you. thankful for everything that you do for our co-op. Yeah, absolutely. So, Sabrina, how long have you been farming? Is this your farm? Are you a second-generation farmer? How does that work? So, my family has been farming in the U.S. for four generations now. Uh, this is our third generation. I am third generation on this farm. Uh, in the background right here, you can see that's my grandparents' house. That's the original farmhouse right there. Um, so my family's been here for a long time now. We came here in 1972 is when our family bought the farm. Um, I grew up here in another house, um, but I graduated college in May 2022, and I've been working full-time on the farm ever since. Love that. That's awesome. And what kind of animals do you have on your farm? So we have cows. Uh, we are a primarily a dairy farm. We sell our milk, to, or we ship our milk with Organic Valley. Um, but we do have a bunch of other fun animals here, and I actually want to show you some of them right now. Um, Ooh, please I am do. down by what used to be our milking parlor before we moved, and you're going to see the new one in a little bit. But I have a ton of little barn cats who all came out to say hello to everybody today. Oh, <laughs> we I'm love cats. We love it. It's a little stall. <laughs> Can we get some virtual here. scratches? Hello, kitties. How are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if some of them will come up and give pets. But yeah, we have a ton of barn cats. They're really important to our farm. Um, they're super friendly. And every morning, if they behave, they get a little bit of milk. Ooh, those are spoiled so, cats. Yeah, so we, we have a little know. extra milk. Do the dogs and the cats get along? Are they friends? Oh, What's going on? Give do. us a scoop. <laughs> so this gray one right over here is best friends with the dog. They hang out all <laughs> the time. They cuddle sometimes. She goes up and rubs up against the dog and the dog just kind of, I don't know if she dislikes it or not, but she stands there and she's very good about it. And she's good friends with all the cats. And they share, uh, they share milk sometimes. The dog likes to drink milk sometimes with the cats. Oh, very cool. Sabrina, we oh. have a ton of people tuning in from all over. We'd like to say good morning to the first grade students at Prairie View Elementary School in DeSoto, Wisconsin. A couple more third graders at Viking awesome. Elementary in Holman, Miss Knutson's plant science class in Soldiers Grove, Wisconsin. Good morning. They're loving the cat, Sabrina. Oh. They say so cute. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it's awesome to hear all those local schools that are tuning in. Uh, I have some friends who teach at a couple of those schools, so it's really awesome to hear that. So as much as I hate to do it, I think we're going to move on from the cats right now. They might pop on a few more times and say hello because there are a lot of cats here and not all of them are actually featured in this shot right now. So Sounds good. Sabrina, did you always want to farm? Um, I'm going to flip the camera quick. Not always. I talk about how, for me, coming back to the farm is not a linear journey. Uh, I was very involved in non-agriculture things when I was in high school, although I did do 4-H. I was a big 4-H'er. Uh, in the classrooms, if you did 4-H, please raise your hand right now. I can't see it, but please show did up you? to your classrooms. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
That's Yay. been great. So I did 4-H yeah. when I was in uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. I was very involved in my local county fair, Vernon County. Let's go. Um, so I was involved in organic or in agriculture, but I also did a lot of other things. I did powerlifting. I did show choir. I did drama club a little bit. And when I got to college, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I was very undecided about what I wanted to do. I actually went into college undecided. Um, but for, with some uh, pestering from my brother, I ended up joining the agriculture classes and the agriculture clubs. So I went to Madison. I did dairy science. I added life sciences communications uh, to really learn more about, you know, marketing, uh, communications. I really got to work on my writing, my videography skills. So that's like videotaping, filmmaking. I learned a lot about social media. Um, and then that led me to an internship with Organic Valley. I was in their, what was integrated marketing. I'm not sure if that's still there anymore. Um, and I got to work under the public relations team. So I'm actually, like I said before, my boss is out here today. And um, my other boss, as I like to call her, uh, Liz is actually gonna be on one of the other farms you guys get to go to today. She'll be with uh, Julia Gasser. Yes. Um, but anyways, working that internship over the summer, I learned that I didn't really like office work. So that kind of led me to go, I really miss being on the farm. I'm missing out on so much. I, COVID had been the year before. I had been working on the farm throughout um, lockdown. So I, I was very used to the schedule of letting cows out to pasture in the summer and just missing out on that really made me realize that I wanted to go home and farm. Yeah, thank you for bringing us along this morning. I know it's a little bit chillier, a little bit windier outside in Wisconsin, a nice fall morning, but it looks beautiful where you're at. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you quick, this machine behind me is called a, let me pivot. Okay, there we go. So this is called a hay vine. So what we do with this is we drive through fields and we'll cut down hay during the summer times. And sometimes we'll even drive through our pastures. If our pastures get too long, uh, we'll cut the grass so it can regrow into better, more nutritious grass for our cows. Um, but this is really important for baling hay uh, to feed our cows during the winter months uh, when they can't go out and get grass on pasture. Got it. Do you have any other animals on so, your farm besides cows, cats, dogs? What else do we got? Uh, we do have some chickens. They're okay. not outside right now. We have about 25 chickens that my family uses for our own eggs. Um, the chickens are a great addition. They're really good for just going around, scratching stuff up. Uh, we let them out around noon every day and they just get to wander around the farmyard and uh, get some extra grub. We do feed them. Uh, they get their own mix of chicken feed every day and plenty of water. Uh, but it's really nice to see them just running around. Uh, yesterday I was sitting in a tractor most of the day and every time I looked over, I'd just see chickens sprinting up and down the road, having the time of their life. <laughs> just living their best funny. life. <laughs> just yes. free roaming. Yes. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you up to the barn and we're going to talk a little bit about the nutrition that the cows get when they're not outside. That would be great. And how many cows do you have, Sabrina? So we have about 350 milk cows. Um, we're a little bit of a bigger farm for Organic Valley, but that by no means uh, means that we're not a family farm. Uh, joined on the farm with me. Uh, my dad is here. I have two brothers. I have an older brother and a younger brother who both work on the farm as well. And then my mom, I like to call her the Wizard of Oz uh, because she's the man behind <laughs> the curtain. And she does all the extra behind the scenes work for us. So actually, I'm going to flip this around for a sec. As you can see, it's really empty in here right now. Um, most of the cows are outside. You can see someone walking in the distance. That's Alexis. She's running to get out of the shot. Um, <laughs> she's all of our cows out right now. So if you look right here, this is the feed mix that cows get. This is called a TMR mix. That stands for total mixed ration. So what this is, is it's a total, uh, it's a total meal for them. So this will provide all of the nutrients, all of the protein, carbs, all the energy they need uh, to get through the day. So what they don't get from pasture grass, they get from this. So okay. there's a whole bunch of stuff mixed in here. There's hay, there's chopped up corn, and 
it's, this is it. This is stuff is like cookie dough for them, you know? It's a oh. bunch of stuff all mixed together. It tastes really good. It smells, to me, it smells really good because uh, you can smell all the sugars from the plants. Because a fun fact about this feed is it's fermented. So this stuff ferments um, throughout the year. And then when it f we feed it to the cows, because cows fermentate their food when they digest it, um, it's more easier for them to uh, get all the nutrients out of it. So another cool thing about that is our cows actually have their own nutritionist. Oh. We have someone who comes out and he figures out what's the best feed for us to give our cows based on the weather, based on what our pastures look like, uh, based on the time of year, uh, based on everything. So he can come out here. He'll take some samples of what our feeds look like that we've grown. He'll look at our cows and he'll say, all right, this is what they need. Yes. Ooh, we have a, a second cow's grade class joining from DeSoto. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Yeah, we actually have a couple of kids who work here who go to DeSoto High School. So if you guys like the tour and in the future, you guys can come out here. Yeah, back to feed. This stuff is so important for them that it's also chopped up nice and fine. Otherwise, the cows won't like to eat it. They're really good at digging through and finding just the right bite of feed for them. So it's important that we make sure everything is perfect and to their liking. And then when they're not eating this, they go outside on the green pasture and eat all that plush green grass. Yes, I'm going to go see if we have some cows outside right now that we can look out on pasture. Because if the barn's empty, that means that all the cows are outside, right? Do the cows come and go as they please? Do you let them out twice a day, three times? They can just do whatever they want. How does that work? So we try to let the cows out for as long as we can every day. Um, usually they'll go out one time. Sometimes they'll go out during the day and then they'll go back out again at night, depending on what the weather's like. Uh, in the summertime, it can get really, really hot here in Wisconsin. Uh, anything above about 75 degrees is too hot for a cow, especially on the ridge. Uh, usually around 70 degrees, it's too warm, but we have a really nice breeze up here on the ridge, so we can go a little warmer than that. Uh, so it's really important for us uh, to make sure when we're letting them out on pasture, the cows want to go out on pasture. And they always do. They love running and jumping around. But sometimes when it's just a little too hot or maybe a little too rainy outside, we'll keep them in. So I'm just going to tell you one more thing about summer. I have these six-foot fans behind me. So in the summertime, we can close up these barn doors here. And we can just run fans through and keep the barn really nice and cool. But during the winter time, we don't want it cool in there. We want it nice and warm. So on these barn doors here, let's see if I can pivot a little bit. You can see these curtains behind me. We close all those curtains in our barn and it locks up tight for the winter time. And cows are really good at making their own heat. So as long as we keep the barn well insulated, they'll stay nice and warm in there all through the winter time. Hi guys, I wasn't sure how the Wi-Fi kicked in for a second there. Uh, but the dog's name is Lori. She is a border collie. She's very good at her job. Um, <laughs> she's very good at a lot of jobs. She's very good at playing stick. What's happening right now is we have cows that are getting done with milking, and they're just coming straight out the door here, going right out to pasture. How many times a day do you milk the cows, Sabrina? They get milked once in the morning and once at night. Okay. Sabrina, the Bluffview sixth graders would like to know what crops you grow and do you have pumpkins and what is the name of your dog? They have Ooh. lots of questions. Let's, <laughs> let's start with what kind of crops so, you grow. Come here, puppy. Come here, puppy. So this is Lori. Lori's Lori. <laughs> she is very hardworking. Yesterday she took a nice nap for about three hours in her little dog house. Puppy. Oh, can I... Can I have Lori's life? I want a three-hour nap. That sounds lovely. <laughs> so, Sabrina, what, what kind of crops hello. do you grow? Did you say it's Bluffview? Yep, Bluffview six yes, graders. Yes, hello, Bluffview. We, we grow a lot of alfalfa hay, and we'll either turn it into hay bales, or we'll shred it up and we'll feed it to the cows as silage. Uh, sometimes we'll do sedan sorghum. That's another really important grass that we'll grow. Holton, fourth graders are joining us, Sabrina, and they want to know if you have a favorite cow, and if so, what is that cow's name? 
So I'm kind of lurking here to see if she'll pop out. Her name is Kari, <laughs> and she is a Jersey, which means she's brown, and she's got a whole lot of personality. The thing about Kari is, is she doesn't like to just sit and do what she's told. So we might put cows out in pasture, and then 10 minutes, 20 minutes later, she'll slip out under the fence and go to the patch of grass that she thinks is greener. And she lives by no rules. And she's a big sweetheart. She likes cuddles and snuggles. And she gets jealous if someone else is getting more than she is. Um, oh. She's just a real sweetheart. I've had her since I was little. Uh, she's a good old girl. And, you know, she's just always kind of been there. Sabrina, speaking of brown Jersey cows, some of you online might know this, but are those the ones that make chocolate milk? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. So fun fact, <laughs> cows do not produce chocolate or strawberry milk. Um, they only produce, um, they produce raw milk. And so when you go to the store and you buy your fun milk, you buy chocolate, you can buy strawberry, you can buy whole milk, you can buy 2% milk, you can buy 1% milk and you can buy skim milk. Um, so one of the cool things is, is that whole milk is only 4% butter fat. So I'm correct in that. I'm correct. Um, whole milk is 4% butter fat. So when they take the cow's milk, what they do is they do this process called pasteurizing where they heat it up really, really hot and they kill all any bacteria that could be in the milk. And what they also do is they remove all the fat from the milk and then they put back in a specific amount. So like 1% milk, they add 1% of the butter fat back in. 2% they add 2%. Whole milk they add in 4% of the milk. So breeds like Jersey cows actually produce milk that might have four, five, six percent butter fat in it, which is super cool because all that extra fat can go to make things like cheese and it can make things like butter and it can make yogurt and it can make all those really awesome fatty dairy foods that we absolutely love, which is why breeds like Jersey's and Guernsey's, you might see some Guernsey's today on some of the farms. Those breeds are super duper cool because they make all the really, really fun products that aren't milk because milk is great. I love chocolate milk. That's my favorite milk. I love a nice cold glass of chocolate milk and I love those little itty bitty uh, single serves that Organic Valley has. I love just crushing one of those. You just put your straw in, suck it down. It's the best. I love that stuff. Um, but I also love the Colby cheese slices. And you need a lot of butter fat to do that. And it's awesome, right? All these yeah, cool cheers. things that our cows can do for us. Yeah, cheers to that. Yeah, love that. Cheers I love that our cheese, cheese products. That was my breakfast this morning was our cheese stringles. So good. So good in lunch boxes And so good for breakfast <laughs> on the go. On that note, um, we actually keep an emergency stash of those stringles in the farm fridge. So you when have I'm to. feeling peckish around 10 a.m. and I go, hmm, I really need a snack. I go yep. and I grab one of those stringles. And um, I said before I did powerlifting in high school, I still lift weights. And a really important part of lifting is making sure you get your protein in. And those stringles actually have like a really decent amount of protein in them for like how small they are. And most cheeses do too. And that's another reason why I love our products is because they're just great for you. And they have all that protein that I need in my diet. That's great. Sabrina, we have one question in the chat. When you are milking, how long does it usually take? So in the morning, they start milking around 6 a.m. and they won't get done until maybe 1030 uh, just because we have so many cows, we got to milk. And milking is the most important time of the day. Um, there's a bit of peace and comfort to doing it in the morning and then doing it again in the evening. Um, but yeah, it's it's always big. It's always fun. I like being in the parlor with my family, my friends, our employees, um, and just having a good time hanging out with the cows. So like I said before, it takes about five hours. We start in the morning and at six, and then in the evening we start about 5.30 just so we can get people in and out a little sooner. Um, but again, it's going to take about four to five hours to do that. So, Ooh, I have a good one here. What is your favorite cheese for a grilled cheese sandwich? The million dollar question. <laughs> okay. I get to answer this, right? I'm so excited. Yeah. My favorite cheese. My favorite cheese from Organic Valley for a grilled cheese sandwich for anything in the world is the Colby slices. That That is my end-all be-all. I love that cheese so much. It used to be the American singles, but then we came out with the American cheese. 
Um, but the Colby always has my heart. Sabrina, someone else wants to know, have you ever made a pizza with Organic Valley Stringles? Ooh, I might have to try that. I yeah. have. And let me tell you how I did it. All I right. rolled the Stringles into the crust so that it was a stuffed oh, crust pizza. That is a pro move. That is excellent. <laughs> yes. I love those Stringles. I love the Stringles. I love, 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 love the Colby cheese, though. That that stuff is so good. So I'm going to show you guys some of our feed storage we have back here. This is what's called a silage face. So this is going to be our hay silage. And this stuff is super duper duper important. As you can see, we have a big pile here. And then if I walk around the corner, we have another big pile here. So this stuff here has to get us through winter. This is our winter storage. We work hard all summer to make sure that we have all of this uh, to get us through the winter months. Because come April, if we don't have enough and our pastures aren't ready for cows to go out on, we're going to have to buy stuff to feed them. So it's really, really, really important for us to make sure that we have all of this stuff stashed away. So... I don't know if anyone has any questions on this. As you can see, it doesn't look very green anymore. That's because it's been cut and it's been packed down super tight. Uh, it's kept in a zero oxygen environment to help it ferment and break down so it's easier for the cows to get those nutrients out of it when they eat it. Uh, we also have a little bit of hay right here on the ground. Uh, we make our hay bales into big, big round, uh, round bales. And we have those stored throughout the farm as well. And those are going to go to not only our cows, but a lot of our uh, younger animals as well, because it's really, really important for them to get their nutritious grass in the winter months, even though it's in the form of hay. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when that snow is covering the grass, I'm sure it's pretty hard for the cows to get to grass. So that's a great solution. Thank you for uh, doing that for your farm or for your, for your animals, Sabrina. So I'm also going to take a second to tell you about this really cool machine here. So as you can see, this is a John Deere tractor. If you've listened to uh, Joe Diffie at all, you've probably heard John Deere <laughs> Green. This is that John Deere Green <laughs> tractor. <laughs> um, but I'm going to tell you what's on back. So this back here is called the mixer. So if anyone's made cookies or you've made brownies with your mom, either A, you or the mixer yourself with the spoon and the bowl whipping it together, or maybe she has a fun, fancy uh, stand mixer where she drops an attachment in and it mixes it all itself automatically. So this is your mixer. Uh, what we do is we put all of our feed in there, all of our ingredients. That's like, instead of your eggs and your flours and your sugar, we have corn we put in there. We have a uh, special grain mix we put in there. We have hay we put in there. And that thing's just going to shred it all up like a blender and mix it all up good so into that silage that we saw earlier when we were in the barn. So this thing has to work every morning. This has to be old reliable because we need it every morning to feed the cows. And we feed all the cows in that barn. We have another barn we have cows to feed in. And then we have another farm that we travel to every day. And we have to make sure we have enough feed. And we have a machine that can mix it upright so that they can eat it. Because you don't want to just eat flour and sugar and raw egg, do you? No, mm -hmm. you want it mixed up all good and tasty like it's a chocolate chip cookie. And this, is, this is our mixer in our oven. Sabrina, we have some new people joining us, um, and Alana wants to know, what other animals do you have? So maybe you can reintroduce yourself again, tell us how long you've been farming, and what kind of animals you have on your farm. All right, so welcome, new joiners. <laughs> um, so as mentioned before, my name's Sabrina. I am third generation on my family's dairy farm. I am joined here by my dad and my two brothers, and my mom works off farm, but as I said before, she is the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain who makes sure everything gets done the way it needs to be. Um, I'm going to flip around and keep talking so you guys can see the cows coming out and the dog. Um, we do have dairy cows on our farm. We have these black and white ones called Holsteins. Uh, but we do have a few crossbreeds and other fun things mixed in there like Jersey cows. I'm going to pan over, over here for a second. This is Victor. He's in a skid steer right now. He's waving at you. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but we use that machine to help push up feed and do other chores on the farm. 
Um, getting back to your question of what other animals. Well, we have the dog here. She's got a stick right now. <laughs> She's busy carrying her stick. Uh, we have a bunch of farm cats running around. You might get the chance to see more of those later. And then we also have a bunch of chickens. We have about 25 chickens. Um, they produce eggs for me and my family to eat. Sabrina, do you know which state has the most organic valley farmed acres? I do know that because we did a video on that and I got to be in it. So the number one organic valley dairy farm with the most organic farmed acres is Wisconsin. And this you is are where correct. Organic Valley was founded in 1988. Yes. Winner, winner. Yeah. You'll get your prize later. <laughs> Yes, with 81,000 <laughs> acres managed by Organic Valley Farmers in the state of Wisconsin. So I have a little hill I'm going to hike up, but I think we're going to go show you guys the milking parlor in a second. Hey, everyone. We're in the milking parlor right now, and all of these girls who are looking at me, they're getting milked. They're just going to stand here and hang out for about 10 minutes while uh, we have two guys in the parlor down below, and they're just putting milkers on cows and getting them taken care of, getting that nice, good product. So Sabrina, this reminds me of my next question. Somebody wants to know, what is your favorite chore and your least favorite chore on the farm? My favorite chore is probably letting cows out to pasture. It's a lot of fun. Uh, seeing them romp and run is always exciting. If you follow me on any of my social media pages, I post a lot of uh, videos of cows running around, having fun in the pasture. And it's just really nice. It's a relaxing thing. You get to be with the animals. You're outside. Um, there's sometimes a little excitement if, like, a storm's coming and you need to bring the cows in. Or, you know, if it's, like, a full Sunday and you're just letting them out. Um, it's, always, it's always a good time letting cows out. Uh, my least favorite chore, uh, it's picking rocks. So you might say, picking rocks? Sabrina, do you guys grow rocks on your farm? Unfortunately, no, we do not grow rocks on our farm, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Uh, so what that chore is, is we go into the fields and we drive through the fields. And if we see a rock sitting in the field, we pick it up and we put it either in the skid steer bucket or we put it, we have a Gravely and a mule, a Kawasaki mule. And those are just like ATVs, kind of like a gator where they got a bench in front and then like a bed in the back. So otherwise I'll put the rock in the bed of this ATV and I'll haul it off somewhere. But it's just, it's annoying. It's in the middle of summer. It's really, really hot on those days when we pick rocks. Uh, your hands get all full of dirt and dry, and I hate that. <laughs> um, so that's why I hate picking rocks. But it's a really, really important job to do because if we're driving through the field with machinery and that mm. rock damages something, that's a huge problem for us. Totally understand that. We have some new people joining. Owatonna Elementary, Owatonna, Ohio. Sabrina, where are you located one more time for our new viewers? Yes, yeah, so we are just south of La Crosse, Wisconsin. We are in what's called the Driftless region of Wisconsin. Uh, we're about 20 minutes away from Cashton, which is where you guys are right now at Organic Valley's Cashton building. Uh, we're one of the local farms for Organic Valley. Um, and there's just a huge community of OV farms right in this area. Um, we're just like a little belt in the Midwest of Organic Valley Farms, because this is where it all started in 1988, just down the road. We have a couple of uh, of the original farms right here. And if you guys have ever heard of the Cashton Creamery, or if you've ever had Organic Valley Butter, that is made just down the road from us at a local creamery, which is super duper cool. Yeah, Sabrina, somebody's wondering, um, Mrs. Wilson's class is wondering, do you have any horses on your farm? We had a horse. Her name was Bailey. Uh, she was very old. She was a sweet, sweet, sweet girl. Um, unfortunately, she's no longer with us, but she was a really great addition to our farm family for a long time. And we called her the guard horse because she'd sit at the end of the road. If anyone came to the farm late at night, she'd follow them around and she'd whinny at them. She'd just sit there and she'd be like, Whoa! like, you know, as a horse <laughs> does. Um, but she was a real big sweetheart. And she was just a really good addition for us on the farm for a long time. It's just a beautiful view behind you, Sabrina, this morning with the rolling hills, the lush green grass. It looks like a beautiful fall day in Wisconsin. Yeah, so I 
actually all the cows out on pasture are right behind me right now. There's supposed to be a group that's going to be right down here. I don't know if they're going to go out in time because those are the cows that are still in the milking parlors. So hopefully everyone else is outside. Why can't I go outside? It's like recess, you know, when you're sitting in your classroom, you look out the window, everyone else is at recess and you have to do math class. You know, <laughs> they're ready, though. They're ready to go out as soon as they're done. They're going out. And yeah. Sabrina, remind us, how many cows do you have on your farm? So we have 350 cows on our family's farm. Um, we're a little bit bigger, but we have a lot of family here. Um, me, my brothers, I have two brothers. I have an older brother and a younger brother. Uh, my dad's still on the farm. I also have grandparents who still live on the farm. They live, I'm going to flip the camera around for a second. There's a brick house off in the distance there. I think you guys can see it. That's where my grandparents live. And the original farmhouse, it's one of the oldest farms on our ridge where we farm. It's over 100 years old. Very cool. While the cows are in the pasture behind us, somebody online is also wondering, does wildlife ever visit your cows while the cows are out on pasture? Yes. So we have a lot of rabbits around here that like to hang out in pasture. Um, <laughs> we actually have a pet frog. I'm going to tell you. His name is Sapo. He lives by the milking parlor and he likes it because it's warm up here. So he likes to hang out. He stays outside, but he likes to hang out by the milking parlor all the time. And he's just always funny to run in. We're like, oh, there's Sapo. He's hanging out by us again. Um, he's really great. We have a lot of birds out here. Um, a lot of sparrows like to live out here. A lot of squirrels outlive in our pasture because there's a lot, a lot of woods around our pastures, as you can see. Yeah, there's a ton of wildlife out here. We have a lot of bugs. I'd say our insects are probably the biggest wildlife we have um, earlier this year. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got to pause that. Here he comes. <laughs> Who do we got? Kitty. He's my cat. He's been missing all morning. And finally He's made back. Appearance. Orange cats are the spunkiest. They just use my stinky. Yeah, that's what they do. Those orange cats. Baby boy. <laughs> this is Ginger. He comes up every morning and looks for his little dish of milk. He's probably <laughs> out checking things out. He likes to run the territory. All those woods out here, he likes to go walking there at night. And then he comes back in the morning in time for milking. But he's late this morning, so he didn't get his stuff yet. Ugh. You can hold this on. Come up. Now oh. he's demanding his milk. He's like, give me that milk. Hello, I'm here for it, please. <laughs> oh, he's ginger. purring really, That's a really good loud name. right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Sabrina, Aren't you have funny? a lot yeah, of he's animals. he's a troublemaker. Oh, how do you come up with all the names for your animals? So I don't like reusing names, so I haven't done that yet. But, you know... Some people might have seen the kittens before. We usually wait to name our animals because we want to make sure they develop a personality and we really get to know them before we name them. So Ginger here is actually named for his pretty blonde color. It kind of looks like a ginger plant. Uh, we have one cat whose name is BK, and that stands for Bunker Kitty because he lived in that back bunker where we were before with all the feed. That's his home. He likes to go back there and hang out. So his name is BK for Bunker Kitty. Um... I'm trying to think. We have another one. His name, I call him Big Fuzzy because he's big and he's fuzzy. He's super <laughs> Appropriate crazy. name. I have one named Big Mama because she's really big and she has a lot of kittens every year. <laughs> so, and a lot of the calves have names oh. too. So I have like Kari is one of the cows. I have Angel. I have Peach. We have one. Her name's Bessie and her mom was named Betsy and they were super, super cute. But that cat Ginger's is just loving girl. you. That cat is living its best life. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's spoiled, all right. I call it, he has a little wood rock he likes to sit on, and I call it his throne. And he sits there every morning, and he yells at me to feed him. He's like, meow, meow. <laughs> Typical <laughs> cat. <laughs> well, thank all you right, again, Sabrina, for, for all that you're doing. And happy National Farmers Day to you. You were getting some love on some signs in the background yeah. behind us. Lots of love online as well as people are helping us celebrate National Farmers Day today. So thank you again. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so, I'm so happy to have this support from all of our consumers and everyone else around. So thank you to everyone who tuned in. Like it means a lot to you, to us, to be able to share our story with you. Uh, you guys are the people who let us farm. 
Uh, you guys are the people who keep us in business so that me and my brothers and my dad can do what we love and be able to do it in a way that's not only good for us, uh, but it's good for the earth and it's good for our cows. You know, our cows mean so much to us. They're our world. They're our whole world. Um, I was talking to Josh, who's out here on the farm with me before. I said, there's comfort in knowing that my cows will always be there in the morning. And there's comfort in knowing that there are great people like all of you on the live stream right now who are going to support us um, and our cows and our dreams. You know, this is a dream. My dad talks about when he came here in 1972, he was 10 years old. His dad had bought the farm and he said, Dad, I'm never going to leave. And he never did. He's been here. He's going to be 60. He's been here for 50 years now. Love that. And he gets to watch his three kids come here. And hopefully he gets to watch his grandkids come here in a few years. And, you know, that's our family. Our family, we're just a bunch of farmers trying to make it and live in the dream. So that's, that's amazing. all we can hope to do. That's an awesome story. So, Sabrina, you have two brothers and yourself. Who's going to take over the farm? Are you guys going to have to, like, rock, paper, scissors? Who wants it? <laughs> it's a constant struggle bus. Um, yeah. You know, I think... Um, so me and my older brother both went to UW-Madison. We both studied dairy science. Um, I studied egg business as well. Um, and my younger brother studied diesel mechanics. Uh, that's his stick. He, he loves the cows. He loves the machinery. He's the guy driving the big tractors. He fixes everything. He, that's, he loves doing that. And that's a really important part of the farm too. If anything breaks down, Jackson's there fixing it, making sure everything's greased up, making sure everyone knows how to fix things in the future if need be. He's so good at that. Um, I think we all bring our strengths to the table. I'm really good at working with the animals. Um, my older brother's pretty good at working with the animals too. He's really a jack of all trades on the farm. Um, I think right now with our dad still in the picture and being as involved as he is, um, we're still trying to figure out where we all fit in place. And I mean, we're young. I'm 23 years old. My little brother just er, is 20 right now. He's going to be 21 in a few months. Um, but I think right now we're still just trying to figure out how we work on the farm, but also how we work as a dynamic because there's three of us and we're siblings. And you know how you are with your siblings. <laughs> yeah, so, always getting along, right? Smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had uh, an Organic Valley tour out here and they're like, and they all get along. And my mom was like, well, as well as they can. Oh my yeah. gosh. I got to stop for a second. He's Sabrina, climbing. there's there's a little ten there's there's a ten year old who would like to know. Do you have any pigs on your farm? Unfortunately, oh. right now we do not. Um, sometimes we'll have a few in there. We recently had two. Their names were Wilson and Sheldon. Uh, funny story about them. So there's another organic farm down the road, and there they sold some pigs, and the pigs got loose um, when they sold them. And the sheriff came up to our place and he was like, Timothy, you're missing some pigs. Like there's pigs out on the roads. And dad was like, those pigs aren't mine. So we set up this elaborate trap and we caught the pigs. And at that point they were ours to keep. So we kept them for our family and they were really nice pets for about a year. Their names were Sheldon and Wilson and they were funny little guys. Oh, so you didn't choose the, the pigs. The pigs chose you. They're like, this is our new yes. home. We want to be here. This is an awesome farm and an awesome family. Love it. Yep, and we fed them really, really well because they're pigs. They like they like a lot of food, right? Yeah. Yeah, someone else, Sabrina, wants to know, is farming hard? Um, it is hard, mostly because I'm not a morning person. Um, <laughs> people are like, oh, you must wake up so early in the morning. I'm like, absolutely not. I am a night <laughs> owl. I stay up super late all the time. Um, the hardest Same part is sometimes for me. <laughs> is getting out of bed in the morning, but then I have to remind myself, like, oh, the animals are waiting on me. Like, I have to get going. Um, like, I don't want to say, oh, it's hard to get out of the bed in the morning, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just it not is a morning though, though. person. It really is. <laughs> Honestly, that's the hardest thing for me. What but is that's your the why? hardest thing. How hard can it be? Yeah. Serena, I think this goes along with that, but what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? I said before, there's comfort in knowing my cows are there in the morning. Uh, and there's the spontaneity of never knowing what's going to come next. 
Um, I get to be out here with my family. I get to see my cats every morning. Um, I love my pals. And I love, like, trying to make a better world, right? Absolutely. That's a great answer. We have a couple more people joining us. Hello from a homeschool family in Arizona. Hello. And Harper, uh, 10 years old, says, your cats are so cute. We totally agree, Harper. We're loving the cats. <laughs> I'm also loving the cats. Yeah. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> he's still lurking around. He might have found a spot to sit down, though, for a little bit because uh, he's not getting the love and attention he thinks he deserves. <laughs> So what time do you start farming in the morning? I'm not a morning person either. So what time do you have to get up? So I usually wake up a little after six and get up here and I'm try to be up here at 730. I like to stop at my parents' house for breakfast every morning. I try to be here early. My brother lives on the farm. He gets here earlier. It's a little bit of grief. <laughs> that family dynamic and how late do you have to farm in the evening do you take like a little siesta in the afternoon and then come back at night to get a cow's milk one more time no i stay here until i'm allowed to go home i live off a farm i hope to move back up here in a few years uh but when my brother got married last year i got kicked out of the house so he could start a life which, <laughs> fair enough. um but I come up here. I try to be here in the morning. I'm here as late as they need me. Sometimes that's five o'clock, six o'clock at night. Other times that's maybe 10 o'clock at night, 1030. Uh, wow. There's a while during um, when, evening pasturing where I was stuck here at 11 o'clock at night. It's a long day. Thank you, Sabrina, for all that you do. We, we've got a lot of comments in the the chat too, thanking you for everything that you do. Thank you for sharing your story with us today and helping us celebrate National Farmers Day. Yeah. And Sabrina, you'll be back with us later today, correct? Yes, I will be. We'll be doing evening milking and we'll probably be doing some similar stuff. And hopefully we can see more cats then too. <laughs> oh, love that. We're here for the cats. I think you'll be back at 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So we're looking Central forward time. to that. Yep. We'll see you then.